What did you just say? It's amazing to be out here in February with this weather. But, what? Ready? Yeah. The elderly first. Oh, okay. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. Calling you out, dude. The what do you elderly. got? What do you got? I got this one. Truths. Yes. Whoa. Yeah. Norway. He just got his ass kicked by a Norwegian. <laughs> you know, he told me off. Tell me to go back to Denmark. He couldn't handle it. He did, uh, he did crush me in competition, and I'm gonna take my, my putter back now that he made the disc. Yeah. So I'm a poor sport. No. I've got a pretty special guest here today. He is the newest staff member for Innova Team Management. And I first met him, it was just before Las Vegas Challenge 2022. And he made the trip from overseas, uh, and he was a tour manager for some Team Innova athletes. He carries with him an energy that is really, really special. And I knew, as well as Sam Farrens, that uh, this guy is, is something special when it comes to um, engaging with both the athletes and fans. And... I had the opportunity to see him again at PCS Sula Open in 2022 over in Norway, and uh, he was a presence on the course. He is very well known in the community over there in Norway and seemed to garner so much respect with touring players. I'm excited today to introduce him to you all as the European tour manager for Innova, and he is Cruz Vik. And here he is. Thank you. Thank you. What's up, buddy? Not much. Just chilling here in Norway. You're just chilling. You, dude, you are chilling everywhere you go. And I think that's one of the things uh, I appreciate most about you is that you bring a smile into the room. Give us a little background. Where are you from? And how did you discover disc golf? So I'm from Tungrefjord, which is like a small town in Norway. It's really close to the Øverås course, which also hosts the PCS Open. I started playing in 2019. A couple of my friends, they were just saying that I should tag along. And a lot of the local soccer players were playing at that time. So I was just like, yeah, maybe I should just try this. I know they have been doing it for a while, but I've never really had the time or wanted to do it because I didn't know what it was. I joined them and like everyone else, I just completely loved the game straight ahead. Just like this um, fantastic atmosphere with talking. I, I really love talk uh, and also uh, competition. You have to like play against you, play against others, compare yourself. I know a lot of people are saying like, don't compare yourself to others, but when you're starting out, you don't do anything else. My persona is just like, I'm not afraid of anything. So I signed up for the weekly league straight ahead when I didn't know how to throw. A couple of months later, I signed up for a national tour in Norway, coming dead last, uh, just having fun, uh, always playing at like 8 a.m. Yeah, that's basically how I started, just throwing myself into it, having fun, and not really caring about the results, uh, more for the love of the game. You know, one of the things I tell everybody here back home in the States after my visit to Norway, the hospitality, the people in the region uh, could not have been more welcoming. And you were you were a part of that. You know, you, you made my experience to PCS um, unforgettable. And it's cool because, I mean, you carry that vibe with you wherever you go. And um, I think, you know, we at Innova and us as a, a group that supports Team Innova, having you over there representing us, um, you know, recruiting others, spreading the good vibe of Innova, of disc golf. I can't think of anybody better who I know personally than you, dude. I remember when you were here at Colton Golf Course with uh, Knut 
and Peter, and you want nothing more than just to bring joy to the game, dude. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm excited where this this starts to go. I remember so well that day when we filmed that stuff, and Knut had took up his T-bird with my face on it that I got uh, like ordered from you guys. Yeah, that's there's my mini. So yeah, that's so funny. I started making these and giving them around, and then I made that. That's actually a picture of my first birdie, and I made the fifty discs of it and Knut used them and then he took one up and shoddy uh, chris shotwell yeah we just like oh where did you get that and i was like oh it's that guy the catch can and then we started talking about that and that was for me such a cool experience when we went to dinner afterwards and you asked for a picture with me a, a couple of the younger people that were with us were just like what why are they taking selfies with him like <laughs> it's like it doesn't like yeah that was such a great moment for me. You told me a fun story that I'd like for you to share with everybody. And um, this connects Christopher Hivu from Game of Thrones, the actor that everybody knows and uh, so well. You have a connection to him and, and you attribute your path to this role to him. Can you talk yeah. about that? When I signed up for my first national tour, he was also signing up for his national tour and he was on the feature card. And then on second round, he comes back to me because we have the same level. Uh, at least at that time, he was pretty new as well. And we started playing and at every regional tournament he played, we always played on the same card after the first round. And I got to know him on a personal level. And we talked about my work as a tour manager in music. Um, and then I got a call from Julstein, Knut's dad, and he asked me if I wanted to go over with Knut, Peter, and Vlad to tour with them for two and a half months on the Pro Tour. And I was like, I really want to do that. Uh, and I had a tour in Norway scheduled, and I got out of that to be able to get over with them. I got to know that it was actually Christopher Hibiu uh, from Game of Thrones who told Justin that they should ask me because this is what I do normally for my day job. So basically, Christopher is the reason why I'm here today. Well, hopefully you and I get to see him again at uh, PCS uh, this year and we can give him a high five and, and celebrate. For the people here in the States and people who have never been um, I think Norway is pretty magical from what I s have seen of disc golf, but would like for you to kind of talk about it. This sport is growing so much right now. Uh, so we had brilliant courses, wooden courses, smaller courses for a long time. And now we're starting to get the bigger courses, the championship level courses, and it's all developing. But we also have a big need for more courses because there's a lot of people playing so now we're getting like Krukol which is like the number two on the list for U-Disc uh, this year and also last year which is a great course as, at like a um, golf course in Oslo and then we have Evros with like the woody kind of woody kind of open more Viking uh, level um, and then we have all these different great courses that are coming up we are now getting to the level where the people who are designing courses are getting to a good level. So we can do all this great stuff, even with entry courses for people that are beginners, like a really good beginners course or something that is valued so much right now. And it's getting more and more of that right now. And also we have uh, West Coast disc golf is completely different than the woods disc golf close to the Swedish border or Oslo. We have so much more wind or rain and all that kind of stuff. And also we are like a really long country. So in the north, they are struggling a lot with the not having enough courses and it's being too um, cold and wintry, like too much snow and stuff. The experience at uh, Euros. Um, was nothing like I had ever experienced. Um, the course is beautiful. 
it's I would say it's on a gently rolling hill that slopes upward and away from the fjords in Norway. And depending on what hole you're on and the view and the direction you're facing, you have a different view of the fjords beyond, which is, it's hard to imagine it, but just, I mean, watch your favorite Lord of the Rings movie and that's kind of what you're looking at. <clears throat> it, it really does feel rugged and it feels magical. Smiling faces greet you. They want you to experience not just the disc golf. We went out and into the fjord on a boat, and we are, Sammy and I, are throwing fish to eagles that dive into the water repeatedly. And that was just one of the excursions. You know, we were so busy um, wanting to be there and present for Innova and support the event. There were some other things going on and activities and excursions that we couldn't even um, participate in that people were doing. I know we went back to Sula and we did a fun tour that went through uh, some of the fjords and went to a, a famous bridge and came back. All I can say, and I'll, and I'll keep saying it, people are probably going to tell me to shut up about it, but it's true. Like if you were to pick out uh, one place to make a destination experience as a spectator and maybe as a player, put that on your list, check it out. Innova sponsors the event and we look forward to the, the 2023 version. And, and I know that I'll hopefully get to see uh, Truls out there. So I kind of wanted to shift gears a little bit, my friend. Yeah. And, but I would like for you to talk about some of the things that you're going to be doing and really what you're just most excited about. So when we started talking about uh, the possibilities of me filling such position, uh, I really enjoyed thinking about building team, helping players make, make them able to perform at their best. Uh, like I'm going to talk like how I do it in touring um, with the musicians. If I make them comfortable on everything else around the concert, they can perform. And it's exactly the same in sports. Um, and I really want to be able to, uh, like, get a safe foundation for everyone in Europe to be able, they can come and talk to me if there's anything they want to talk about, big or small. I don't really, I don't care how small or how big you think it is. If you want to talk to me about it, go ahead. And also scouting players and seeing development on current team players is something I really enjoy. Even I'm watching people on the national tour in Norway, which I've known personally, and I can see like, oh my God, they're getting so much better at putting or there's like all these kind of small things. It's, that's like the main thing that I really enjoy. Um, but then also, I I studied law for a year. Uh, I started law school, and then I dropped out and did a bachelor's in music business. Um, and I love the business side of things, so contracts and uh, how like fulfillments and all that kind of stuff is also really interesting for me. So a team manager job where you kind of combine my love for humans, but also like kind of the contracts and business kind of things. Um, that's like an amazing thing for me. And also working with you on the media side um, with uh, making sure that everyone has updated profile pics on Udisc, PDGA, like the, all those small things uh, make such a big difference. Uh, and I also love, I have a camera myself. I take a lot of pictures of players and I really enjoy that part too. So there's like not, not a specific thing in my responsibilities that I don't really would enjoy. You talked about relationships. You talked about media. You know, you talked about, um, recruiting and, and communicating with, uh, not only the, the team that is there currently, but hopefully the future team takes somebody unique to be able to do that, man. Everything I've seen in you, I think you've got, got all that it takes to do a great job of that. 
you approach everybody with a smiling face and say, let's talk about it, you know? And like that, I think is the single, I mean, there are, there are many important attributes about what you do, but I think if you start with that, boy, does that not get things off on a great foot? So, um, yeah. So that's, stoked about that. that's like, that's like an important thing for anyone to know. Like that's how you develop as a human being too. Uh, because if people have criticism, construct, like constructive criticism to me, that's helping me understanding them better, but it's also helping me understand how I come about. And uh, that can make me a better manager. That can make me a better person. Uh, like everything you get in, like all informations you get, you can use to get better. If you're afraid of making mistakes, you will uh, not develop as fast as you can. Hundred percent, my friend. Yeah. Don't fear. Don't fear failures. Learn from them. Right. Talk a little bit about um, how you feel about working with the people at Innova and the relationships that you're building. So I was with Sam at Hero Disc USA. He was showing me around, and then he was just like, "Yeah," casually just say, "Yeah, we're gonna play with Dave tomorrow," and I was like what and and i was like i didn't know what to say like i was so excited um and i was just are you joking and he's like no 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 we're gonna play the early round like have you seen it on the instagram and i was like yeah of course and then he's like yeah everyone's gonna be there and i was like oh my god that's so cool and when we got there and for me like coming from little norway and being able to play with Dave and then with Jerry and you yourself and Sam uh, it was just like, it was ridiculous in my head. Uh, I was like, this isn't happening. I, I'm a A20 rated player from Norway, just like laughing about. And then three, four years later, I'm playing with the guys. Also this banter, like they're like, like it's just a group dynamic and I feel that's one of my greatest strength. I can come into a group and I can kind of catch the vibe and I can find my group, like my place in the group and playing there was amazing. And also it was sunny. Like <laughs> you can never go wrong with a sunny day and playing disc golf. Right. But yeah, no, it was a surreal moment for me um, to play with them. And then, Casually being called out by Dave for having a noodle arm. Uh, that was one of my greatest moments. Uh, and that, like, and also that that made me uh, meet Eric Friedman the next day because of that. Like, you took up your like iPhone or filmed me throwing a Tremonti it, and How I got was that dude. That yeah. was so cool. And for me, working with music, that was like a big thing. I was like, Eric Friedman, are you kidding me? And then we, like, in the car after the round, we listened to demos that he was recording right now. And I was like, I, I don't know what to say. It was insane. And then, yeah, so I got two days with playing with Dave and Jerry and yourself and Sam. Um, yeah, it was amazing. Uh, and the hospitality is what was really great. Uh, I really felt that, People really cared of having me there, which was great. And uh, Sam just showing me around, taking him, like, taking me home to him and seeing his uh, new kitchen, part of his new kitchen. <laughs> yeah, now it was amazing. I had a great time. Is that not why we all started to play this game in the first place? Was just the community and the the people that we get to play with. Yeah, and even Ira played a practice round with me. In Las Vegas. Oh, did he really? At yeah, LBC? He couldn't get a hold of Sam because he was supposed to play with Sam. And then he saw me and I was like, yeah, I'm going to play rounds. And then he joined me and two Norwegians. So we actually played a practice round. In your opinion, where do you see magic in disc golf? I see it on a regular Tuesday in a wooded course with... Uh, a couple of friends that are on T1 starting to uh, going to play 
and then there's one single one that doesn't have any to, anyone to play with. And he asks if he can join. And you have one and a half hours, a group of four people, uh, two different groups, actually, that combines into one, just having a great time, playing sports, talking about life, um, and getting through all the emotions of happiness uh, um, and being able to perform, being really bad performing, and being angry all within that one and a half hour. And when you're done, you get in your car and you would be like, there's not much other things that I'd rather do for one and a half hours than this. That's my like take on magic of disc golf. Everyone has their own version of what is magical about disc golf. And it's cool. I got to sit there and listen to you say that. And you know what's interesting? I could paint the picture in my mind perfectly. You got a special disc from your buddy Sammy Ferens, our buddy Sammy Ferens. Yes. Will, you, will you show that off and talk about it? This is a champion edition T-Bird. So it's like the first run, first edition. And it actually says Sam on it. And I... So I went early in the weekend to Sam's garage and we looked through some discs and I saw a baby, uh, one of the oldies. And I was like, I've been looking for this disc for like my entire disc golf life. And he was just like, okay, here you go. And I was like, that was crazy. But then I saw this T-Bird. So I, I love T-Birds. I probably have a hundred T-Birds. And that's my main go-to. Like I, I don't. I have a noodle arm, so I throw T-birds. Uh, that's my main driver, well, fairway driver. And when I saw this, I was just like, "This is a gem." And I was like, "Really, I really wanted it." And um, and it was like, "You got to work for this." Like Sammy always say, like, and I was like, "I'm ready to do whatever you want, Sam Ferrets." And we did this. So the entire weekend, everything we did, he always just like, no, you got to work for that T-Bird. And the entire weekend, everything I did. No, that's not true, but. Yeah. He wanted. Pretty close. To I know. Yeah, pretty close. close. <laughs> pretty close. <laughs> like everything. And, um, and at the end, we had this ceremony at his house after I build some rocks or something in his backyard um and and i was like that was such an honor for me and he was just like you need to throw this like this isn't going on the wall and one of my main things is that i have discs to throw i don't put them on the wall i have one disc that is like i know as soon as that hits something hard it will crack so that is the only dish that I've put on the wall and just like, I can throw that. But this is going to fly and hit all the woods in Norway. And and just having the boy champ name on this in your bag is kind of a crazy thing for me. And also, uh, yeah. And I, ha I bought some backups from Andrew Rich, I think. Okay. Yeah, in uh, Vegas. They have a couple of backups, but this is the one. This is like, uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm really like, I would thank you, Sam Ferrens. Thank you very much.